But public school is like strength training for our children's faith. Let them wrestle with worldly counter narratives to God's truth while they're still under your care. And I thought we'd go through a few comments here. Also, I noticed the assumption in the quote from the article wrestle with worldly counter narratives to God's truth. It just assumes that there's worldly counter narratives to God's truth in public schools, which I'm sure there are. There here. are. There that, are. That but, doesn't feel controversial. Um, but the assumption is but that, that the public school is the enemy of God and wants to, to that's kind of built into the quote a little bit. And l- my, let's look at um, smash balls. <laughs> <laughs> sending your child to public school is like sending an untrained soldier into battle. You need to realize your kids aren't a missionary to public schools. They are the mission field. Wait, when did they get trained? For the battlefield? Yeah. I don't know. Will they never be trained for the battlefield? Eventually you got to go, right? Or even if you don't go to public school and you avoid that altogether, eventually you go into the public world. Nope. You, Amish. <laughs> Next question. You found, you found. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jenna Cross. Oh, yes. What could possibly go wrong handling, handing your children over to people who hate God and want to train them in paganism for 1,260 hours every year for a minimum of 13 years? Paganism. She sounds delightful. Um, paganism is a specific thing, though, right? Like there are there are a set of pagan beliefs, um, or is, is you think she's just using that as a generic? You're not a Christian term. Yeah, I I don't Probably. think I'm not sure she knows, and I don't know who this person is. Oh, you don't know who J- Jenna Smashballs is? <laughs> now you're making two people. In the Bible, the the Bible uses "don't do this, do this." The pagans do this, yeah. and we have it built in what the pagans are. But pagans were just anybody that's not Jewish in the Bible, and so maybe there's a sense where she's kind of using it in her. She's not thinking Jewish; she's thinking Christian, and the pagans are just anything counter to God. She's trying to bring it back, bringing Gen- that old school Jenna Smash Balls. You can't bring, that- <laughs> you can't bring that back. All right, and then there's some. Who's uh, that dude? Oh, Vody Bakum. We cannot con- uh somebody posted a meme of Vody Bakum. We cannot continue to send our children to Caesar for their education and be surprised when they come home as Romans. I if you think that is in line with what the woman ahead of this person said, I would disagree with that. I would agree with Vody Vody Bakum in the sense that School in general is this, the public school system is sort of modeled after this old German, like you got kindergarten, that's a German word. And it's modeled off of a German school system that was designed to make people obedient to- I thought it was Italian. Not kindergarten, but I thought we were modeled after the Italian system. I It could be a, a hodgepodge, but- One of the axis of evil. <laughs> I, I think- Japanese. The broader point is we're making sure people are good at following orders and repeating things that are given to them. And this can yeah. work out well. I'm not I'm not on board with this, the public school system. We are lucky to live in an area where the public schools are all pretty decent and most of the teachers seem to give a shit. When I was growing up at the school I went to, which is in this same area, there were teachers that were obviously drinking on Didn't the job. that. Yeah, you can kill the PF. Yeah, thank you. He did that without even looking at it. Nate. That was a no look. No look PIP offload. No look Nate. That's what we're going to call him now. Yeah. You said uh, when you were growing up, you felt like teachers were uh, less interested in pouring into you as a young, hopeful youth. Yeah, and less equipped. I was not a good student, and part of that was ADHD and all that stuff. Um. I still struggle with like with putting thoughts down on paper if I have to fill something out or add thoughts. Uh, I I struggle with it, and you can hear it sometimes when I'm talking, where I'll start a sentence and then restart it to go a different direction. It's like my brain is firing in a different way, bro. It's just the weave. That's right. Hell yeah, you got that weave. I got that weave, bitch. <laughs> 
but there were like the counselor didn't know what to do with me. Oh. It sort of checked out. There were teachers that were getting high with students and drinking on the job. And I'm sure there were good teachers too, but I wasn't paying that much attention. I just knew which teacher had booze in their mug. Dude. That doesn't really, I'm sure that exists a little bit, but at least at the schools, the school my kids go to, mo- most of the teachers are dialed in. Yeah. Oh, your, uh, your kid's high school was in the news though for their uh, woke ass library, right? There, there was not their library, a personal library of a teacher ma- uh, made a little news. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the principal was on it. He explained it to the parents. None of it was in the curriculum. You know, I, the teacher might have been hoping a kid were to ask them about a book and then they could talk about it. But my kid, just talk to your kids. The, the point is, if your kids go out there to do the best, I don't know that we're going to get to this article, but the article is is geared towards, you, you got to send your kids out and they're going to have to go out into the world. That, so you, you're going to have to let them go. Plus, it's an opportunity to communicate them, share with them like how people have different ideas about what should be done in the world and the ways to, yeah. to problem solve. Like you don't want your kids in a situation where they are brittle. And, yes. And, and would simply crumble in the moment that they encounter something that's counter to whatever they'd experienced before that. And not know what to do and and the worst case scenario that we can imagine as parents is uh they make a terrible choice because they were unprepared yeah now the uh, the argument against that is why throw your kids into the lion's den right why would i do that so what's interesting is i i grew up 99 percent of my life going to public schools and look what it did to me um but i went to a christian university uh well two christian universities because i transferred um halfway through because spokane's a terrible terrible city and i traded that for santa barbara and everyone objectively would say that is an upgrade Mm -hmm. that's not controversial (laughs) but um our daughter is going to baylor university now which is a baylor barely but the uh it's it's a uh, clearly, like they would profess Christian faith. It's a it's a Baptist school. It's private, um, and which means it has bad theology. So you're already having a problem. <laughs> God, everyone has bad theology, according to somebody, and someone else is heretic. Exactly. And um, we were when we were deciding. Well, when she was deciding, it was really her choice. When she was deciding between a few different um, s- schools. One of them was Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And um, and there was a few others too, like Texas Tech and University of Hawaii. Anyway, a blend of Christian and non-Christian options. And we did have the talk, a talk with her uh, and she mentioned it. She brought it up. She was like, hey, at some point, I don't want to feel like I'm the only fish that's swimming upstream. Like all, like, all of my beliefs will always be challenged all of the time. And and I get the sense that at some of these other colleges that that's going to be the case. Um, now, at a college the size of Baylor, a, a Division One NCAA school with tw- more than 20,000 students, you get the full spectrum. Not everyone's going to be a Baptist no, no, or a Christian. Or even a Christian. Yeah, yeah. And those people play the sports. Um the devil's sports, <laughs> and 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 so will she will totally have those opportunities, but um, but Lindsay, her mom, my wife, and I actually feel good about the what what our encounter was with how the the administration and the teachers and the faculty approach Christianity and and the chance to encourage the kids. Um, here's here's a good example. They are required to take two semesters of chapel throughout their four years of college. Um, there are sixty different types of chapel that you can choose from that will that are up to you. You get to pick whichever one. And so you can imagine some of them are like an early morning Bible study to volunteering and homeless shelters and to late night worship um, uh, services. 
it's it it covers everything which i think is great because the fear for for a lot of folks is you're going to pigeonhole my kid you're going to protect them you're going to force them into your version of christianity or your theology which is like heavy guardrails instead of allowing them during especially during their college years to try to form and develop their their sense of faith and what they believe and why they believe it. Yeah. Um, so we feel good about it. I'm sure along the way, we're going to find out that Baylor has its own problems, but, um, but right now, if you're looking for you, that's the thing is so much of dialogue right now, politically or in just all facets is we, we pretend like there's some utopia we can get to where you can't hit perfection. You're just going to eliminate all your enemies and you're just going to have easy pickings or whatever. You can't. Um, you mentioned the lion's den. One other comment, or I'll just go through a couple more. Yeah. You see uh, how this um, lines up. You can or you can't. Nate, it's up to you. Throwing your kids into the lion enclosure at the zoo is like hunting training for your children. Living in Gaza is like survival training for our children's faith. Sending your kids out to the enemy army while your city is besieged can be great soldier training for them. So th- those concepts imply that parents are doing nothing at home. I know. And I think, I think in a weird way, they're confessing to their own parenting skills. Oh, yeah. I think Freud would have something to say about that or some other psychologist. Um, because parents feel powerless and they want to... Sometimes we want to control so much and we want to keep our, we all want to keep our kids safe, but wow. we all know the ki- the parents that don't let their kids do anything or constantly keeping them clean. Don't let their hands get dirty, anything like that. Those kids become sicker. Their immune systems are less equipped to handle the stuff that life throws at them. And I think that's a way better metaphor than the, the bullshit examples of living in Gaza as like survival f- training for our children's faith. The metaphor of like the the people that are lost in space right now at the space station, I think some of them came back. A couple of stayed up there. Do you think they're getting overtime? Yeah, <laughs> that they Dude, better be. Can you uh, imagine that? Twenty four seven, double like time, eight months of overtime. Oh, dude, not yeah. And you're eating. Your room and board is on NASA's dime. Um. <laughs> But hey, I think the metaphor... Some, I'm saving money, bitch. Some of these parents are like the people in the space station. If they were to just be up there, they're not exposed to resistance in the form of gravity. And if they don't work out, i.e. come into conflicting ideas, they're going to come back down here and they're going to be weaker for it and worse off. So how do you find the sweet spot? Because there is a version of this which is exposing kids to things that they're not equipped for when they're not equipped to handle them and it can be damaging. We're not talking about and people on 6th Street in Austin, Texas. <laughs> don't let your kids be exposed <laughs> there. At any age. Actually, don't let adults be exposed to that. To be honest, there's problems. No. Um, th- uh, so, all right, let's talk about this. You and I have a different philosophy of parenting in what content we'll show our kids. Do we? We do, for sure. Hasn't he, okay? Not to throw you under the bus. You, in this no, you can do it. Um, my daughter keeps asking to see Fight Club. My kids haven't seen Fight Club. Are you sure? Yeah, you, you might want to check on that. Oh, not with me around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a password protected Netflix, but yeah, we do have a couple movies that's like, oh yeah, we could probably watch this, and then it's like, oh, fast forward, <laughs> fast forward, fast forward. Didn't wait, wait, wait. Conversation afterwards. Have you watched it with them? The movie it? No. <laughs> no, I'm referring to some secret movie. Have you watched it? <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, uh, I thought you did watch it with your kids. No, I don't want to watch that garbage. I mean, the book is great, but that that movie scared me as a grown ass man. And you watched that with your kids? I watched it by myself in the dark. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> nope. And I cuddled with the dog the whole night. And you're and then you kicked puddled. her away. <laughs> yeah, then I kicked her away. Get out of here, dog. Yeah, she saw a squirrel. That movie's terrifying. Uh, no, I, but you're I, right. And the subjective nature of things. I think in general, 
if if we were to rank ourselves in the in the in the level of adultness of movies we'll just pick this one i think you may you you have tended to show your kids more uh this i don't mean to say it this way but like more adult themed uh content earlier than than Lindsay and i did probably yeah i know this because i would sh- shun you it's come up on the podcast i mean last you for it I'm like how could you last week we talked about the n-words and blazing saddles and that's right i subjected my kids and i i they were not prepared for that and i wasn't actually it was the jerk oh yeah actually i haven't watched blazing saddles with them now that i think about it, it was the jerk oh there's... i was conflating my n-word movies you got an opportunity it's easy to do <laughs> next week kids <laughs> but in the jerk he he does say it somebody he hears somebody else call somebody else the n word and then i i'm messing up you don't this have up. to justify the jerk we don't need that's, no, the point is the that, fun the funny thing is he's like you are looking at a n word and he says the word cuz he's a simple person that was raised by a black family and that's all he ever knew and he's white steve martin people in case you haven't seen it. spoiler alert movie that's 50 years old or whatever yeah but but you get to talk about the context. Yeah, that one's relatively harmless. Yeah, I can't. I, I'm. It's failing me. Which ones you've shown your kids? I feel you like you've shown them some scary ones that I was like, dude, I don't even know if I'd watch that movie. Probably. And the weird thing is, I, I feel less pearl clutchy about some of the steamier. If there's like make out or maybe more on the, on the sexual side of things, like I don't want. I'm not gonna like watch sex scenes with them. We fast forward that. But it has crossed my mind that we're so just in general, I think most of this most of this is true about all of us, even if it's not true about our kids. Yeah. We get more uncomfortable with the sex stuff than we do about people's heads getting blown off. And neither of them are real in movies. It's it's fictional. Like it's they didn't actually have sex. How do unless, you know? Well, unless you're watching other things that are on certain machines, but But there are uh Humans are we're we're visual processing creatures, and um, depending on who the person is, those things can get stuck in your head, and they can be haunting. I still remember. This is true. I still remember when I was in college watching American History X. You ever watch that movie, Nate? You probably shouldn't. There's there's a scene at the beginning. What a where, great look Nate is giving. I know you. he's like, like he's squinting. He's like like the fuck. Why would I watch that? No. What's the matter with you? Yeah. American History X. Yeah. And there's in the beginning, early part of the movie where Edward Norton commits a murder. And um, and the way that he does it, I didn't know was a thing. And I remember, I remember for two weeks, it was so disturbing. I couldn't get that out of my head. I remember praying. I'm like, God, like, just remove this because it's, it's disturbed me so much. And this is me at God's like... God's like, I don't even have that power. Sorry. Yeah, he's <laughs> I like, would if I could. Th- this is like at 20 years old. And so so I, I... That for me was a lesson of like, as I'm evaluating content for my kids, hey, what is the thing going to be? If I was affected in this way, kids got my DNA. They may be affected in that way too. And uh, yeah, especially when it's your... You can... Your body adjusts and you can get numb to things a little bit. Yeah. Which may not be good. May not be good. And it's also, it's not wrong necessarily if you're used to a particular thing. Like I know people that are very well adjusted that enjoy horror movies in a way that I don't. Are they, I haven't watched are they well horror adjusted? movies with my kids and they've asked and I haven't done that. I don't like those, man. I was exposed to Pet Cemetery, um, when I was... A Pet Cemetery Seven or, or eight, Pet Cemetery? The movie. Speaking of Pet Cemetery, Ranger, come here. Come over here. Come here. Okay. Come on. Come here. If you Up. guys want to see the dog Up. survived Up. and he's kicking. I didn't really kick her. Ranger, come here. Psst, psst. Up. Come on. Oh, good girl. Oh, what a beautiful dog. Oh, All right. This isn't going to stop. So keep that going and I'll just talk over it. She kissed me, listener. We do it again for the ASMR. Thank you. <laughs> I definitely. Oh, get that's good girl. 
my uh, my parents, aunt and uncle, they all went out for dinner and left me with my older cousins. And I walked in on them watching Pet Cemetery, which is Dude. an old horror movie. And I don't know if it holds up. I haven't gone back. I it's was Stephen trauma- King. It I probably was does. Traumatized by it. Children of the Corn. Any Stephen King's really? I don't. I don't like horror either. It like it it messes with me. However. The book It. I like The Shining. I mean, the book It is amazing. Shining, Shining was the oh, one we watched. That's the, I the watched one the you kids. watched. With, yeah, yeah, and that is disturbing, even as a forty-year-old man. So your kids are messed up for life. They're totally prepared for public school now. He watched it with them. They were eight years old, Nate. Oh. They were no, you <laughs> liar. No judgment. <laughs> I was thinking of what I was going to say next. Eight and I, just, I almost didn't hear that. I was going to let that go. Eight. Eight. He brought, they had barely gotten out of diapers and he, he pointed their faces at the screen the whole time. Right. They tried to look away. Oh, brutal. Okay. Well, back to um, so, the so public school stuff. I think that there is, there, Ideally, as a parent, right, you try to find a sweet spot. How can I protect some level of in- innocence? Um, naivete is not a terrible thing. There's protect that as long as you can. There's there's not a lot of value in uh, a ten year old who knows the ways of the world, right? Yeah, it's like the metaphor of the garden story, where before they're exposed to the knowledge of good and evil. They had Adam and Eve had paradise. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Thank you. Not perfection, Billy Bond. <laughs> Billy gets a shout out. Actually, I don't even think it says paradise in the Old Testament. It might get referred to that in Revelation. It's, it's not a direct. Yeah, it's later a, on. Yeah, but it's not. It wasn't created perfect, but they they had everything they needed, and they just. I, you can take it literally if you want, but my more important drive is. You once you know too much, it it's it hamstrings you. You're exposed. You you recognize your own shame because you have knowledge. Oh, no, I made a mistake. When you're a kid, it, it watch your kid grow up when they're just young and they're toddlers and everything. Everything is magic. It's perfect because they don't know. It's very good. They don't know all the ins and outs. They don't know when they make a mistake. You help them up when they get a boo-boo and all that stuff. Or when others do. It's so beautiful. Which is an argument for why you should never join church leadership. That's right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, you get the knowledge of the tree, the fruit of the good and garden and evils. Um, that wasn't a sentence. The good and the garden. The good and the garden and evils. I'm weaving again, guys. Here we go. Um, but that finding that sweet spot of how can I... Uh, how can I introduce these things to my kids in a way that they can start to understand them, start to wrestle with them, but in a way that doesn't screw them up forever, right? That doesn't damage them, that doesn't leave some imprint in them. But it, that's hard, and it feels like sometimes that's like a moving target. Yeah. You know? And, and why there will never stop being uh, parenting books is because humanity is so diverse the way people learn like our kids are, your two daughters my two daughters are so different from each other yeah. same parents raising them yep. you can recognize things in you things in them that are from you things that are from your wife yeah. all that stuff um there's no like cookie cutter this is the way it is and so i say this too much right i haven't said it yet until now your mileage may vary on how you raise your kids but I do know drink night very generally I said the drinking term very generally if you protect your kids and over shelter them you make them weaker and this isn't just about faith and Christianity this is in all senses um, and if you abdicate your responsibility as a parent you raise sociopaths yes <laughs> and so like fun- literally Ted Kaczynski the Unabomber didn't get he was in a home for a while as a baby where nobody was touched, he didn't have he didn't any physical touched, contact. Right. Yeah, and so th- these things matter, and it's it's a balance. But the How alarming much- thing, and I know this isn't real life, the Twitter thing, but it's so much of like you post a picture of of fried chicken. I love fried chicken. Oh, you hate steak? Like that's what 
Pan- I love do you pancakes. Know what, do you know what had to happen to get that chicken? Yeah. I really like this beer. Oh, so you hate scotch and everybody who drinks it? Whatever it is, it's like this weird dichotomy of like, we have to... The All the language is disheartening of the godless. The, it's the godless trying to but destroy that's God. I wonder if like how much technology and algorithms are pointing us towards only holding extreme views and losing the nuance. Like we can see this in the trends of headline skimming. I'm not going to take the time to research, to read through it directly. I will skim headlines Yeah, and, and gravitate towards the things that bolster my inclinations. Yeah. I, I'm, I just, I'm thinking about fear profiteers and that's, most of profier tears. Mo- nice. <laughs> um, that's that's a tough one when you're three drinks in. <laughs> but uh, and this this is all directions politically, spiritually. Anybody that has a big your church grows more if you scare people into following into following God into following you. Your political platform grows more, and this. This applies to people you agree with and disagree with. So if you're on the right and you like a Charlie Kirk or a Candace Owens or whoever, they're not encouraging you with what's about seeing the best in life. They're scaring you because that's what brings in the numbers. And they don't even have to do it consciously. It's a subconscious drive that forces us in, into playing to the algorithm. Um, and so I think we need to... We haven't done that for the most part. I mean, we've talked about stories yeah. that, that are have been uh, kind of juicy, but none of us, none of this, of this is directionally towards scaring people into watching this podcast. But there, maybe there's a another facet. So maybe we should. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if it's a if it's completely about fear, but there is some. I think that there's a common uh, position, which is feeling justification in in defending a belief system, position, culture, way of life. And so it is. Um, my job is is defender of this thing, and if and if I don't stand up for this, it may not be fear, but uh, maybe there maybe the core maybe the core emotion is people fear are, still people are searching for purpose maybe the main thing is finding a purpose and fear is probably the best motivator yeah but th- the point that I was trying to make is like there's fear hey they're doing all these terrible things and and there can be a version of that which is how how terrible is that the other thing is uh, I need to preserve the good thing so I, I, I'm I'm acting as a wall to preserve the good thing. Maybe it's a maybe as I say it out loud, it's only a slight variation of fear. Uh, That's okay, and maybe it's justified. I don't know. There's a good At times. The fear, the fear response, is how humans have survived. So, at its core, it's a good thing. But like you said, the social media, the way things are, yeah, designed to tap into that. It's on overdrive, and it's. It's like porn is the the unhealthy way of expressing and finding sexuality and I was going to say acceptance, whatever it is. Like uh, that's about control, mostly. It can be, but but uh, it's it's like ramped. It's dialed up to eleven. It's the fast food of sexuality. Sure, and it's not healthy. Um, fear does a similar thing. Um, it, it causes us to segment and we have to have the ins versus the outs. And we miss... They're, the way these people are talking about public school, I promise you, in every public school, no matter how bad, a lot of those people believe in God in some way and they would all... Most of them would ha- would want what's best for their kids. It doesn't mean it always plays out that way. There are some, I'm not denying that there's agendas in public schools or in some of the curriculum, but this is all a part of being an adult in the world is you prepare your kid to come across different ideas. But the average teacher is not trying to poison your kid against God. They're just trying to get by. And they, they're, they're, it's like, I'm just trying to feed my family and all that stuff. And we all want 
at the end of the day, we all want what's best most people. Most people want what's best for humanity in general and especially for their family and community. I think that's true. Most, but the problem is, is that there, not everyone agrees on what on how to get there. What is best, right? So their version of their best may be someone else's worst. This is true, which is where communication comes in. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you some of these comments kind of betray the fact that you you guys don't ever talk to your kids. You just try to shelter them from all the bad. Yeah, but, but if you have a dialogue with your kid. And like we said before, it's different for every kid as they age. But whatever the situation, as your kid gets older, you have to make decisions to allow your kid to experience discomfort because they need to grow. Because if they just yeah. if they just stay in your nest, they'll never learn how to fly. Producer Nate, um, how old does your daughter Maggie need to be before you and your wife sh- let her watch the movie Shining? <laughs> the Shining. Have you seen The Shining? <laughs> Actually, that's probably the best place to start. Have you and oh, yeah. and your wife allowed each other to see the movie Shining? The Shining. We've seen it. Yeah, classic. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. Can't not. I actually see got it. a stuffed animal about the gentleman from the, the gentleman with the axe embedded in his chest. I got a stuffed, uh, not an animal. It's a it's a stuffed human. Oh, he was an animal, all right. <laughs> that poor guy, man. Ah, <laughs> uh. that's a. That there's that that scene and there's the one scene with the old lady upstairs. It's weird. Yeah. In the bathroom. It, it, yeah, in the bathroom. That the is zombie. It looks like his wife. She turns around. She's like a uh, not his wife. <laughs> and she's naked and um and then she changes and yes. I fast forwarded that part, I'm pretty sure. But it origi- probably eight years old. It was originally. It originally came <laughs> nice. out as he's a. Way, uh, yeah. He's way ahead of me. Nice, nice eight callback. Eight years old, solid. Um, it originally came out as a made-for-TV movie, and even the made-for-TV movie was terrifying, like mm. terrifying. It's funny. It's it's not funny. The wrong adjective. It's just ominous. It's it gets classified as horror, but it's not the same as. It's not a slasher. It's like a thriller. It just builds and I've never, builds. I've never read a builds. scary book like that. It's like a thousand pages long. It was a page turn. I need to read that book. It's I haven't so read good. that book. It's so good. And I don't like these things. I, I like genuinely do not like horror things. That was really good. But I wouldn't let my kids watch it because I'm a good dad. Um, <laughs> but finding... Uh, in, so when you were talking earlier, Zach, one thing came to mind. Fear is rooted in control. And I think a lot of it stems from the idea that you If we have... outsource our parenting because it's easier or we believe Sorry, the lie spoiler that alert. we're not qualified experts. Holy crap, I don't know how buttons work. Zach has just learned about the internet yesterday. The point that I was trying to make was um, uh, the idea that we have more control than we actually do. This was evidenced when our youngest daughter was three years old. She, in the middle of the night, she rolled out of bed, her bottom bunk bed onto carpet, like we have here in the studio, same carpet. This is not thin. YouTube.com slash bros babbles beer. And she broke her collarbone. Whoa. You should give her more protein. Fail as a parent. Yeah. Hollow bones. She have like bird bone disorder. Calcium, not protein. She oh, whatever. Needs calcium. Both. Maybe your kids need calcium. Yes, Andy. Protein only. <laughs> They're all their only muscle. They're all jacked. <laughs> um, she broke her collarbone, and I, Lindsay to this day will say she's like that was the moment she was where she was like, okay, I, I don't have control over over my kids. I I cannot. What actually? What even can I protect them from? In this, the most safe of scenarios, you are at home. You just rolled out of bed and you broke your collarbone. And and while ultimately it was it was like a relatively safe in outcome, um, that coming to that realization that like we just we don't get to control this uh, world, so our job is to help your kids through it and and help pace them through these things, and ideally expose them to the levels of stuff that they are you deem they're able to handle. Yeah. So maybe your kids were able to handle this stuff earlier. Than our kids were, um, 
Or maybe they're not, and you've created sociopaths. That's potentially, you know, that's that remains to be seen. And give them know, time. We're going to do this podcast for the next twenty years, and we'll provide consistent updates on this progress. But knowing your kids, they are not sociopaths. But they're t- delightful human beings. They are. Thank you. Talk to your kids. Communicate with your kids. Dialogue, not just tell them. Don't 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 do yeah. do do. Get to know how they feel about something. <laughs> I just imagine the bird. Don't 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 do 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 don't don't do do. I mean, based on some of these responses, that's basically what might be going on in the house. Yeah, don't so, don't don't. That's idiocracy. Do do uh, do do. <laughs> Electrolytes. It has what plants crave. <laughs> Oh right. my gosh. Okay, you want to pull up something? One more clip and then let's do some feedback and All get right. out of here. I like it. Uh this is a button. This is from uh back in August. The the nice athe- the kind atheist he- Hement Meta. I think he's like the nice atheist. I'm I'm sorry. I I don't I like his stuff. Uh, I like listening to him. He's a thoughtful guy. Too many caveats. Play this clip. You're right. This is uh Nope. Is he fear profiting? If we outsource Kirk our Cameron. parenting because it's easier or we believe the lie that we're not qualified experts to educate our kids, so we have to we have to subcontract our parenting and discipleship out to the government, we're going to have little kids that come back as little Marxists, little statists, little atheists, drag queens, strippers, drug dealers, and you name it. Pull your kids out of the schools that are teaching your kids bad things and mm. put them into places that teach them good things. Okay. I both agree and don't agree. I know. I had the same <laughs> thoughts. It's like, yes, if some of that stuff was true, I, and it I, might be. I wouldn't want my kids to become those things. No. No. Um, but it's the, it's the... So stop teaching them. We're, <laughs> we're making... The more we consume just that type of stuff, it's there's no room for where's the gray. Okay, wh- I can I can create a good scenario with what Kirk Cameron was saying. I could steel man that and say, I see what he's trying to do, and I could find the things I like about that, and I can learn from it and grow from it. And also, I can point out that he's doing all he's doing is in versus out. You go to this school. This is what you're going to get from your kids, and that's right. just not true. And we're all living examples of that. Literally, I don't know if that helps your point. <laughs> I think it does for comedic no, purposes. I know. You're right. I know. But I know. I know. I believe in us. Yes. I. Um. You're supposed to laugh at my joke and realize that it's a joke. Nate, you're not laughing at my joke. Laugh out loud, Nate. You're fired. <laughs> Add more. <laughs> okay, that's better. Better. We'll but you're still it. fired, and so. 